Hello, my friends. Today, I'll be reading to you The Black Cat from Edgar Allan Poe. Please forgive the light behind me. I'm using it so I can see the book better. The Black Cat. For the most wild yet most homely narrative which I am about to pen, I neither expected nor solicited belief. Mad indeed would I be to expect it, in a case where my very senses reject their own evidence. Yet, mad I am not, and very surely do I not dream. But tomorrow I die, and today I would unburden my soul. My immediate purpose is to place before the world, plainly, succinctly, and without comment, a series of mere household events. In their consequences, these events have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed me. Yet, I will not attempt to expound them. To me, they have presented little but horror. To many, they will seem less terrible than Baroque's. Hereafter, perhaps, some intelli- intellect may be found which will reduce my phantasm to the commonplace. Some intellect more calm, more logical, and far less excitable than my own, perhaps which will perceive in the circumstances I detain with awe nothing more than an ordinary succession of the very nature of the very natural cause and effects. From my infancy. I was noted for a docility and humanity of my deposition. My tenderness of heart was even so cons- conspicuous um, as to make me the jest of my companions. I was especially fond of animals and was indulged by my parents with a great variety of pets. With these, I spent most of my time and was never so, and never was so happy as when feeding and caressing them. This peculiarity of character grew with my growth, and in my manhood I derived from it one of my principal sources of pleasure. To those who have cherished an affection for a faithful and loyal dog, I need hardly be at a trouble to ex- of explaining the nature or the intensity of a gratification thus derivable derivable there is something in the unselfish and self-sacrificing love of a brute which goes directly to the heart of him who had who had has had frequent occasion to test the paltry friendship and gossamer fidelity of mere man i married early and was happy to find that my wife is my wife a disposition not uncongenial with my own observing my partiality for domestic pets she lost no opportunity of procuring those of the most agreeable kind we had birds goldfish a fine dog rabbits a small monkey and a cat this latter was a remarkably large and beautiful animal entirely black and sagacious to an astonishing degree in speaking of his intelligence, my wife, who at heart was not a little tinc- tinctured uh, with suspicion, superstition, made frequent allusions to the ancient popular notion which regarded all black cats as witches in disguise. Not that she, not that she was ever serious upon this point, and I mentioned the matter at all, at all for no better reason than it than that it happened, just now, to be remembered. Pluto, this was the cat's name, was my favorite pet and playmate. I alone fed him, and he attended me whenever I went about the house. It was even with difficulty that I could prevent him from following me through the streets. Our friendship lasted in this manner for several years, during which my general temperament and character through the instrumentally instrument inst- instrumentality of the field intemperance had experienced a radical alteration for the worse i grew day by day more moody 
more irritable, more regardless of the feelings of others. I suffered myself uh, to use intemperate language to my wife. At length, I even offered her personal violence. My pet, of course, my pet, of course, would make me when were made to feel the charge of my disposition disposition i not only neglected but ill used them for pluto however i still repaint i still retained a sufficient regard to restrain to restrain me from maltreating him as i made no scruple scruple of maltreating the rabbits the monkey or even the dog when by accident or through affection they came in my way, but my disease grew upon me. For what disease is like alcohol? And at length, even Pluto was now becoming old and consequently somewhat peevish. Even Pluto began to experience the effects of my ill temper. One night, returning home, more intoxicated from one of my haunts about town, I fancied that the cat avoided my presence. I seized him when, in his fright at the violence, he inflicted a slight wound upon my hand with his teeth. The fury of a demon instantly possessed me. I knew myself no longer. My original soul seemed at once to take its flight from my body, and a more than fiendish mal malevolence gar uh, garnered, thrilled, uh, every fiber in my frame. I took from my waistcoat pocket a pen knife, opened it, gasped, grasped, grasped the poor beast by the throat, and deliberately cut one of its eyes from the socket. I blush, I burn, I shudder, I shudder, when I pin, while I pin the damn, damnable atrocity. When reason returned with with the morning when i had slept off the fumes of the night of the night deba the debacle i experienced a sentiment of half horror and half remorse for the crime of which i had been guilty but it was at best a feeble and equivocal feeling and the soul remained untouched i again plunged into excess and soon drowned in wine all memory of the deed In the meantime, the cat slowly recovered. The socket of the lost eye pre pre presented a frightful appearance, but he no longer appeared to suffer any pain. He went about the house as usual, but as might be expected, he fled in extreme terror at my approach. I had so much of an old heart left as to be the first grieved, at first grieved by this evident dislike on the part of a creature which had once loved, loved me so. But this feeling soon gave place to irritation, and then came as if to my final and ir ir irrevocable overthrow the spirit of perver perverseness. Of, the spirit, of this spirit, philosophy takes no account. Yet I am not more sure that my soul lives than I am that perverseness is one of the pri primitive impulses of the human heart. One of the indivisible primary faculties or sentiments uh, which gives direction to the character of man who has not a hundred times found himself committing a vile or a stupid action for no other reason than because he knows he should not. We have we have we not a perpetual inclination in the teeth of our best judgment to violate that which is law merely because we understand it to be such? This spirit of perverseness, I say, came to my final overthrow when it was it was this fathom of unfathomable longing of the soul to vex itself, to offer violence in its own nature, to do wrong for the wrong for wrong's sake only, Th that urged me to continue and finally to consummate the injury I had inflicted. The injury I had inflicted upon the unoffending brute. One morning, in cold blood, I slipped. I slipped a noose about its neck and hung it from the limb of a tree, hung it with the tears streaming from my eyes, 
and with the bite a bitter bitter bitterest remorse at my heart hung it because i knew it had loved me and because i felt it had given me no reason to no reason of offense hung it because i knew that it was that in so doing i was committing a sin a deadly sin that would so jeopardize my immortal soul as to place it if such a thing were possible even beyond the reaches of the infinite mercy of the most merciful and the most terrible god on the night of not on the night of the day on which this most cruel deed was done i was aroused from sleep by a cry of fire by the cry of fire the con- the curtains of my bed were in flames the whole house was blazing it was the great difficulty that my wife a servant and myself made our escape from the fire the destruction was complete my entire worldly wealth was swallowed up and i resigned myself there f- uh, there, f- there forward to despair. I am above the weakness of seeking and to establish to establish the sequence of cause and effect between the disaster and the atrocity. I am, but I am detailing the chain of fact, and wise not to leave even a possible link imperfect. On the day succeeding the fire, I visited the ruins. The walls, with one exception, had fallen in. This exception was found in a compartment wall, not very thick, which stood about the middle of the house and against it, and against which had rested the head of, the, of my bed. The plastering had here, in great measure, resisted the action of the fire a fact which I attributed to its having been recently spread. About this wall a dense crowd were collected, and many persons seemed to be examining a particular particular portion of it with, with very minute and eager attention. The words strange, singular, and other similar expressions excited my curiosity. I approached and saw, as if graven by unbelief upon the white surface the figure of a gigantic cat an impression had given with an accuracy truly marvelous there was a rope about the animal's neck when i first beheld this apparition for i could scarcely regard it as less my wonder and my terror were extreme but at length reflection came to my aid the cat, I remembered, had been hung in a garden adjacent to the house. Upon the alarm of fire, this garden had been immediately filled by the crowd, by someone of whom the animal must have been cut from the tree and thrown, through an open window, into my chamber. This had probably been done with the view of arousing me from sleep. The failing of other walls had com- had compressed the victim of my cruelty into substance, of the freshly spread plaster the lime of which with the flames and the ammonia of the carcass had then accomplished the portraiture that as i saw it although i thus readily accounted to my reason if not altogether to my conscience for the startling fact just detailed it is not the less fail to make a deep impression upon my fancy for months i could not rid myself of the phantasm of the cat and during this period there came back into my spirit a half sentiment that seemed but was not remorse i went so far as to regret the loss of the animal and to look about me among the vile haunts which i now habitually frequented for another pet of the same species and of somewhat similar appearance in which to supply to supply its place one night as i sat half stupefied in a den of more than infamy my attention was suddenly drawn to some black object repositing upon the head of one of the immense hog heads of gin or of rum which constituted the chief furniture of the apartment i had been looking steadily at the top of the hogshed of this hogshed for some minutes and what now caused me 
surprise was the fact that I had not sooner perceived object thereupon. I approached it and touched it with my hand. It was a black cat, a very large one, fully as large as Pluto, and closely resembling him in every respect but one. Pluto had not a white hair upon any portion of his body, but this cat had a large, although indefinite, splotch of white covering nearly the whole region of the breast. Upon my touching him, he immediately arose, purred loudly, rubbed against my hand, and appeared delighted with my notice. This, then, was the very creature of which I was in search. I at once offered to purchase it of landlord, but this person made no claim of it, knew nothing of it, and had never seen it before. I continued my caresses, and when I prepared to go, when I prepared to go home, The animal uh, invited a, a disposition to accompany me. I permitted it to do so, occasionally st stooping and patting it as I proceeded. When it reached the house, it domesticated itself at once and became immediately a great favor with my wife. For my own part, I soon found a dislike in it arising within me. This was just the reverse of what I had accomplished anticipated but i knew not how or why it was its evident fondness for myself rather than rather disgusted and annoyed me by so slow degrees these feelings of disgust and annoyance rose into the bitterness of hatred i avoided the creature a certain sense of shame and the remembrance of my former dead uh, deed of cruel cruelty preventing me from physically abusing it i did not for some weeks strike or otherwise violently ill use it but gradually very gradually i came to look upon it with un un unnuterable loathing and to flee silently from its audacious presence as from the breath of a pest pestilence With my aversion to this cat, however, its partially for myself seemed to increase. Partiality for myself seemed to increase. It followed my footsteps with a, with with a, a light step, which it would be difficult to make the reader comprehend. Whenever I sat, it would crouch beneath my chair, or sp or spring upon my knees, covering me with its loathsome caresses. If I rose to walk, it w if I rose to walk, it would get between my feet and thus nearly throw me down, or fasten it, or fastening its long and sharp claws in in my dress, clamber in this manner to my breast. At such times, although I longed to destroy it with a blow, I was yet withheld from doing so, par partly by a memory of my former crime. But chiefly, let me confess it at once, by absolute dread of the beast. This dread was not exactly a dread of physical evil, and yet I should be at a loss how otherwise to define it. I am almost ashamed to own, yes, even in this felon's cell, I am almost ashamed to own that the terror and horror with which the animal inspired me had been heightened by one of its, well, by one of the merest charms it would be possible to con to conceive. My wife had called my attention more than once to the chain to the character of the mark of white hair, of which I had spoken, and which constituted the sole visible difference between the strange beast and the one I had destroyed. The reader will remember that this mark, although large, had been originally very indefinable but by slow degree degree by imperce imperceptible and which for a long time my reason struggled to reject as fanciful as fanciful it had at length assumed a rigorous distinction of outline it was now the representation of an object that i shuddered to name and for this above all i loathe and dread and would have rid myself of the monster had i dared it was now i say the image of a hideous of a ghastly thing of the gallows oh mournful and terrible I uh, engine of horror and of crime the agon of agony and of death and now i was indeed wretched beyond the wretchedness of mere humanity and a brute beast whose fellow i had contemptuously destroyed a brute beast to work out for me 
a man fashioned in the image of the high god, so much of insufferable woe, alas, neither by day nor by night, I knew the blessing of rest any more. During the former, the, during the former, the creature left me no moment alone. In the la, in the in and in the latter, I started hourly from dreaming, uh, from dreams of unutterable fear to find the hot breath of the thing upon my face and its vast weight an incarnate nightmare that I had no power to shake off incumbent eternally in my heart beneath the pressure of the torments such as these the feeble the feeble remnants of the good within my within me succumbed evil thoughts became my sole intimates the darkness and most evil of thoughts the moodiness of my usual temper increased to hatred of all things and of all mankind while from my sudden frequent and ungovernable outburst of a fury to which i now blindly abandoned myself my uncomplaining wife alas was the most usual was the most usual and the most patient to suffer of suffer one day she accompanied me upon some household errands into the cellar of the old building which our poverty compelled us to inhabit. The cat followed me down the steep stairs and nearly throwing me headlong, exas exas exasperated me to madness, uplifting an axe and forgetting in my wrath the childish dread which had stayed which has stayed in my hand i aimed a blow at the animal which of course would have proved instantly fatal had it descended as i wished but this blow was arrested by the hand of my wife goaded by the inference into goaded by the interference into a rage more than demonical demoniacal i withdrew my arm from her grasp and buried the axe in her brain she fell dead upon the spot without a groan The hideous murder accomplished, this hideous murder accomplished, I set myself forthwith and with entire deliberation to the task of concealing the body. I knew that I could not remove it from the house, either by day or by night, without the risk of being observed by the neighbors. Many, proje many projects entered my mind, and one period I thought of cutting the corpse into minute fragments and destroying them by father, fire. At another, I resolved to dig a grave for it by the floor of the cellar. Again, I deliberated without casting it into the wall, about casting it into the wall in the yard, about packing it in a box as of merchandise with the usual arrangements, and so getting a porter to to take it from the house. Finally, I hit upon what I considered a far better expedient than earlier than either of these. I determined to wall it up in the cellar, as the monks of the Middle Ages are recorded to have walled up their victims. For a purpose such that as this the cellar that that was that well adapted, its walls were loosely constructed and had lately been plastered throughout with the rough plaster which the dampness of the atmosphere had prevented from hardening. Moreover, in one of the walls was projections caused by the false chimney or fireplace that had been filled up and made to resemble the rest of the cellar. I made no doubt that I could readily displace the bricks at this point, insert the corpse and wall up, and wa and wall the hole up as before, so that no eye could detect anything suspicious. And in this cal in this calculation, I was not deceived. By means of a crowbar, I easily dislodged the bricks, and having carefully deposited the body against the inner wall, I propped it in that position. While with little trouble, I relayed the whole structure as it originally stood, having procured mar mortar, sand, and hair, with every possible pr precaution. I prepared a plaster which could not be distinguished from the old and with that with this i very carefully went over the new brick work when i had finished i felt satisfied that all was right the wall did not present the slightest appearance of having been disturbed the rubbish on the floor was picked up with the min with the minutest care i looked around triumphantly and said to myself here at least then my labor had not been in vain my next step was to look for the beast which had been caused uh, which had been the cause of so much wretchedness 
for I had at length firmly resolved to put it to death. Had I been able to meet with it at the moment, there could have been no doubt to it of its fate. But it appeared that the crouching animal had been alarmed at the violence of my previous anger, and forbore to present itself in the present mood. It is impossible to describe or to imagine deep the deep, the blissful sense of relief which the absence of the dreaded de detested creature occasioned by my bos in my bosom it did not make its appearance during the night and thus for one night at, le at least since its introduction into the house i soundly tra and i soundly and tranquilly slept a slept even with the burden of murder upon my soul the second and the third day passed and still my tormentor came out once again, I breathe as a free man. The monster in terror had fled the premise forever. I should not behold it no more. My happiness was supreme. The guilt of my dark deed disturbed me but little. Some few inquiries had been made, but these had been re readily answered. Even a search had been in instituted, but of course nothing was to be discovered. I looked upon my future felicity as secured. Upon the fourth day of the assassination, a party of the police came, very unexpectedly, into the house, and proceeded again to make rigorous investigations of the premise. S secure, however, was the inscrutab inscrutability of my place of concealment. I felt no embarrassment whatsoever. The officers bade me accompany them in their search. They left no nook or corner unexplored. At length, for the third and fourth time, they descended into the cellar. I quivered not in a muscle. My heart beat calmly, as of one who slumbers in innocence. I walked, I walked the cellar from end to end. I folded my arms upon my bosom and roamed easily to and fro. The police were thoroughly satisfied and prepared to depart. The glee at my heart was too strong to be restrained. I burned to say, if but one word, by the, by way of triumph, and to render doubtly sure their assurance of my guiltlessness. Gentlemen, I said at last, as the party ascended the steps, I delight to have allied your suspicions. I wish you all health and a little more courtesy. By the by, gentlemen, this... This is the very well. This is a very well constructed house. I may say an, ex an excellently well constructed house. These walls. Are you going, gentlemen? These walls are solidly put together. And here, through the mere frenzy of bravado, I rapped. I rapped heavily with a cane, which I held in my hand upon the very portion of the brick work behind which stood the corpse of the wife of my bosom. But may God shield and deliver me from the fangs of the archfiend. No sooner had I reverberations of my blows sunk into silence than I answered by a voice then I was answered by a voice of from within the tomb, by a cry at first muffled and broken, like the sobbing of a child, and then quickly swelled into one long, loud, and continuous scream, utterly anonymous un un anomalous and inhuman, a howl, a wailing shriek half of horror and half of triumph, such as might have arisen only out of hell, conjointly from the throats of the damned by in their agony and of demons that, exul that exult in the damnation. Of my own thoughts, it is folly to speak. Swooning, I staggered to the opposite wall. For one instant, the party on the stairs remained motionless, though extreme extremity of terror and awe, and the next a dozen shunt arms were, tro were toiling the at the wall. I felt bodily, the corpse already greatly decayed and, cl and clotted with gore, stood erect before the eyes of the spectators upon its head, with red with with red extended mouth and solidarity eye and a s and sol solitary eye of fire sat the hideous beast whose craft had seduced me into murder, and those informing and those informing voice had consign consigned me to the hangman. I had walled the monster up with the tomb. And that was the black cat. It's pretty similar to Tell Hell Heart, uh but yeah. Some of those phrases are weird because of how old the book, how old the story is. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Uh, please comment down below how you like these readings. If you like me to continue with these readings. And if there's any way I can improve them.
Until next time, goodbye and God bless.